Kuyamora, good morning. <laughs> um, for those who don't know you, I am Dani. Uh, my wife is up at Kids. Um, so I have the honor to share with you guys this morning. Um, so my heart for this morning um, is more, I just feel like God wants to minister um, and not so much teach. So my message is not very long. Um, so I'm going to share a short message. Maybe it doesn't end up being short. Maybe it's short. <laughs> In my mind, I think it's going to be short. Um, so a short message. And then um, after that, we're going to trust God for some ministry and just dealing and trusting him to do what he wants to do. I'm just going to move this a bit. I can see I can't see some other people. Okay. Cool. So we're just going to read one psalm. The psalm is Psalm 38. Um, and the psalm is about David, and it's about the, he's pleading before the Lord. He's bringing his heart before the Lord, but in the psalm we also see the truth of him knowing who God is in his life. Um, so I'm trusting God for three things. Firstly, that he'll convict us of our sin, okay, because we all have them. <laughs> so, and once he convicted us of our sin, I'm trusting that we will repent, right? So that we'll have a heart of repentance towards the Lord, saying, Lord, I want to stop with this. I want, and thank you that I'm aware of it, but now I want to end it. Okay, and then thirdly, once we've repented, then we trust God for the healing. Okay, to show us the root. Why is this a habitual sin? Maybe it's things you are struggling with that you really can't get free of. Um, habits of sin, intentional sin, whatever it may be, we really trust in God that there will be healing this morning, maybe it's healing in a moment, and the Holy Spirit just sets you free. And maybe it's the process of healing that will start this morning, to say, Lord, I've been struggling with this for how long, um, and I really want to be free. Um, I don't want this to be a part of my life anymore. And it can be something as big as pornography, or it can be something as small as a temper, temper issue, right? I don't want to make it small and big. Whatever it is that you're struggling with that's causing you to step into sin and outside of the will of God, because what is sin? Sin means missing the mark. Okay, so that's anything outside of the will of God. So if it's anything in your life that you know you're struggling with, to bring it in line with the will of God for your life, we want to trust God that He will bring it in line with His will this morning. Okay, amen. I hope you guys are excited. I am excited. Okay, so Psalm 38. Let's read together. O oh Lord... Do not rebuke me in your wrath, nor chasten me in your hot displeasure. For your arrows pierce me deeply, and your hand presses me down. There is no soundness in my flesh because of your anger, nor any health in my bones because of my sin. For my iniquities have gone over my head like a heavy burden, they are too heavy for me. My wounds are foul and festering because of my foolishness. I am troubled. I am bowed down greatly. I go mourning all day long. For my loins are full of inflammation, and there is no soundness in my flesh. I am feeble and severely broken. I groan because of the turmoil of my heart. Lord, all my desire is before you, and the, my sighing is not hidden from you. My heart pants and my strength fails me. As for the light of my eyes, it is also gone from me. My loved ones and my friends stand aloof from my plague, and my relatives stand afar off. Those also who seek my life lay snares for me. Those who seek my hurt speak of destruction and plan deception all day long. But I, like a deaf man, do not hear, and I am like a mute who does not open his mouth. Thus I am like a man who does not hear, and in whose mouth is no response. For in you, O Lord, I hope, you will hear me, O Lord, my God. For I said, hear me, lest they rejoice over me, lest my foot slips, they exalt themselves against me. For I am ready to fall, and my sorrow is continually before me. For I will declare my iniquity, I will be, angry, I will be in anguish over my sin. But my enemies are vigorous, and they are strong. And those who hate me wrongfully have multiplied. Those also who render evil for good, they are my adversaries because I follow 
what is good. Do not forsake me, O Lord. Do not, O my God, be not far from me. Make haste to help me, O Lord, my salvation. Okay, so we're going to break it down. Like take it bit by bit and see what the Lord wants to tell us. So I can go back to the first slide, the verse 1. So David knew part of God's character is his wrath. All right, I have not personally heard many sermons about the wrath of God. It's something we do not talk about very often, but David knew it. It's like, oh Lord, do not rebuke me in your wrath. All right, that means he knew that this is part of God's character. Sin cannot be present with the Lord. All right? So sin and God cannot coexist. It's impossible. And David knew the fact that he has sin means there's a problem. <laughs> okay, because I have sin in my life, I need something to restore me back to the Lord. Because without that, I deserve the wrath of God. Without the restoration of Jesus Christ, I deserve the wrath of God. And the wrath of God exists, and the wrath of God is real. It's the existence of hell, right? There's a hell which is meant for the devil, not for us. But unfortunately, if we do not choose God and we do not live in His will and He never came to salvation, then that will unfortunately be where you will end up. So the hell is real. We don't preach a lot about hell, and I'm not going to preach about the hell this morning, but I just really want to tell you guys, we are shofar. We believe there's a heaven and a hell, right? We do not believe that, yeah, I'm not going to go into all the other stuff but we do believe there is a heaven and a hell. David knew of God's chastening. He said, nor chasten me in your heart displeasure. We see in Hebrews 12 verse 6 that it says that the Lord chastens those whom he loves. Right? So what does that mean? Chastening means purification, um, being more holy, living a more holy life. It's a path of restoration and healing that we walk after we came to salvation. So you give your life to God. He accepts you as you are, right? So you do not need to fix yourself before you come to the Lord. But now that you have come to the Lord, it's like, okay, cool. Now we're going to start this walk of restoration. Now I'm going to start healing you, and now I'm going to start making sure you represent me well to this world. Because the Holy Spirit comes to live in you. And because He's in you, He dislikes the things of this world because the Holy Spirit is part of the Trinity. Okay, so what is the Trinity? The Trinity is God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. So God the Holy Spirit is in one with Jesus Christ and God all the time, and He's in you. Because He's in you, He wants to be like the Father, and He wants to be like the Son. And therefore, He's going to try and make you more like Jesus Christ all the time. It's His role in your life, is to convict you of sin and to make you more holy, and to make sure you look like Jesus Christ. Why? Because we want His kingdom to come. And His kingdom is going to come through you in your life all the more, the more you look like Jesus. We are called to walk as He walked. Um, and we heard Uncle Derek say it so beautifully this week. He said, if we need to look at the life of Jesus and we need to be effective disciples and do as He did. Okay, for us to be effective disciples, we need to look at the Gospels, see what Jesus did and do the same. Okay, if Jesus came to heal the broken heart, then we are called to do the same. Okay, we are called to do the same, not because we are amazing, but because of the Holy Spirit that comes to live in us. And that is the work that he wants to do through our lives. So David knew this. David, and I, it's very similar to me. I'm like, Lord, do not chasten me anymore, please. <laughs> it really hurts. Okay, so the chastening of the Lord is not fun. It's often really difficult because you realize how far you're short, how far short you fall. <laughs> okay? So you realize how much stuff you need to deal with. Um, yesterday you thought you're okay, and today you figure out, you realize, oh, I've got so many issues. <laughs> I've got so many stuff I need to work through. And we all do, right? So sometimes we want to resist it, and we shouldn't. Okay, you need to walk through the fire to be purified. So if you guys are currently, any people that are here going through that season of purification, we're always going through purification, but sometimes it's just like a magnifying glass in some seasons. Um, I really want to encourage you is to walk through it. Okay? Don't avoid it. Because if you're going to avoid it, it's going to come back. 
and it might be worse next time because then there's going to be more stuff to purify because you've just added back more baggage because you're just avoiding it. Okay, so just go through it and walk through the road that is taking you. And the chastening of the Lord is not his punishment towards us. Okay, the Lord is not punishing you. He's cleansing you. Right, that's a really important thing to know. He's not punishing you. He's cleansing you. So when I struggle, I know my temper is usually my biggest thing when I realize I'm far from God. So I used to have a very short temper before I gave my life to God, and it's the first thing he convicted me of when I gave my life to God. And I had to put up scripture, memorize scripture, like be angry and do not sin, make sure I don't go to bed angry, memorize all those scriptures to make sure I need to get this into my heart so that I can stop, and the Lord freed me totally. And then two years down the line, all of a sudden, I started getting angry again. Like, Lord, what's going on? It's because I drifted away from him, all right? So when we drift away from him, those old things could start to come up again. So that for me is usually a very quick indicator. I still thought I'm cool. Me and God are cool. We're spending a lot of time together and everything is fine. But as soon as I start getting irritated and angry with people, I know I'm not as cool as I thought I was. And I'm not as holy as I thought this was. And I'm not as intimate with the Lord as I thought I was. So oftentimes your love towards the people around you will also be an indication of how truly good your love towards God is. Because it's easy to say, I love God and I'm all for Him. But man, God, your people irritate me so much. <laughs> okay, and then you are not so good with God. <laughs> because if you love God, you will love His people. Right? So don't think you're all good, but you don't love His people. If you love God, you will love His people. The two are inseparable from each other. And everyone that laughed, I know, relates with that word. <laughs> Okay, so verse 3. There is no soundness in my flesh because of your anger, nor any health in my bones because of my sin. And this is in line with what I just said now. Is David, he really knew how short he's falling. Yet he was such, I want to say a good man. He was a good man. He did so much, but yet he still knew how short he was falling. And he did not excuse his sin for all the good deeds he's done. Lord, I'm falling so short, but man, look how Goliath fell. <laughs> I don't see that. It's like, Lord, my sin is before me. I anguish over my iniquities. And so often we will excuse our sin with our good deeds. Like, your Lord, I said I lost my temper, but at least I gave something extra to the guy who washed my car today. I blessed him with something. Or I gave him a good word. Whatever, we excuse our sin with our good deeds. And sometimes we do good deeds to quench our conscience of the sin. And we need to have our sin before us saying, Lord, I cannot continue with this. I'm in anguish over my sin. Or are we just okay with our sin? Like, ugh, I've been struggling with this for years, but everyone else also does. <laughs> I look at the people in the church, and they also do it. We are not called to compare ourselves to each other. We are called to compare ourselves to the life of Jesus Christ. And we are called to live as he lived. And we need to stop comparing ourselves to anything other than him. Okay, we are called to live the life that Jesus Christ lived. And our sins should be anguish in us, like, Lord Take this from me. Forgive me and free me from this. And verse 6 to 10, let's read verse 9, where David says, Lord, all my desire is before you, and my sighing is not hidden from you. All my desire is before you. And I went through something last week where I was going through a bit of a difficult time with a lot of stuff going on. And one evening, I just had to break. And, and I just let everything out, sharing with Anushka, saying, I'm going through this and this and this and this and this. I was just in tears because of how much I allowed everything to build up. And usually, I'm someone that shares easily, but just the last couple of weeks, I haven't been sharing, and it built up. And then all of a sudden, it just came out. And it was so freeing 
and the Lord really healed me and did a good work. But we shouldn't get to that place, okay? We need to be at this place that David is to say, Lord, all my desire is before you. All my desire is before you. Everything is before you. I place everything before you the whole time because that's such a safe place. It's such a safe place to place everything before the Lord continually the whole time, placing it before Him. All right? And as you place your desire before Him, if you're doing it with a pure and honest heart, He will show you which desires are from Him and which are not. Okay? He will show you, okay, thank you, but that's actually a bit selfish and that is not from me. <laughs> um, and He will show you, sure, that's in line with my heart, here's a word, here's a whatever. It's not for now, it's maybe for later. But it's such a beautiful place to just continually place your desires before the Lord. For He's your Father, He's your good Father, and He knows everything you need for now and for later. And in verse 10 it says, My heart pants and my strength fails me, as for the light of my eyes it has gone from me. And David David spent mourning in the Lord's presence. Not mourning, mourning. So mourning like in weeping sorrow, okay? So he spent time of mourning in the Lord's presence, which is the safest place. Sometimes we think we're mourning. Say now someone did something to you at work or a family member or whatever. We actually just want to tell someone how bad that other person is. And we excuse it and say we're mourning and we're venting. You need to vent at the Lord, <laughs> and then you need to vent at your friends and your family where it's needed. There is a role for a community, and there is a role for friends and fellowship to speak truth into your life, but secondary to the role of what God is in your life. God is your primary venter, <laughs> okay? If you need to vent, you vent with Him. And after you vented and you let everything out before the Lord, He will show you, and He will clean you of most of the stuff you would have said to the other person, and you will only vent the necessary things to your friend, and they will give you the word of encouragement and the wisdom that you need um, within a role of safe community. So David spent time of mourning in the Lord's presence, which is so beautiful, because in that place the Lord healed him, and in that place the Lord purified his heart. And he was aware of his emotions. Okay, self-awareness. And being aware of what you're going through is really important in life. It's, as I said, that's something that I realized last week where I was just going through the motions, just I need to do this, do this, do this, do this, do this, just in the admin mode. Um, and then all of a sudden I'm like, okay, I'm actually not all right. I need to deal with these emotions. Um, and that's for men and women. It's for boys and girls. It's for everyone. Um, we need to deal with our emotions and we need to be aware of what we're going through. Okay? Because... Whether we like it or not, they have an impact on us and they have an impact on those around us. Um, so be aware of your emotions and be aware of what you're going through. And then verse 13 and 14 is a follow-up to David after he says um, of the people that are seeking his destruction. And he says, but I am like a deaf man. I don't hear them. I'm like a mute who doesn't open his mouth. That was so beautiful for me. Because he knows what to pay attention to and what not. We, me, yo, you won't believe this guy. <laughs> He's doing this and this and this. They're seeking my destruction. They're looking to do me harm. I didn't do anything wrong. Just trying to defend ourselves all the time. And David's like, I'm like a deaf man. <laughs> I do not hear them. I'm like a mute. I won't even talk about them. He knew what to pay attention to what was important and what was not. And we are so consumed and we get distracted like this with what's important and what's not. If someone just offends us a little bit, man, ons is opgeelli, ons is rechtvulle. We shouldn't. We need to have hearts of compassion and we need to know what is in God's will and what is not. What deserves our attention and what does not. And to have grace, grace for that person as well. Jesus Christ being on the cross saying, Lord, forgive them, they don't know what they're doing. That we will have the same type of compassion for the people of around us. Lord, forgive them, they don't know what they're doing. But then maybe saying, Lord, show me if it's me. Show me if there's actually something in my heart that I need to fix, that there's a reason for this that's happening. And also the reason why this is bothering me so much. I mean, if, this, if we know that what that person is doing or saying is irrelevant and totally out of line, 
Why is it bothering me so much? Lord, is there any truth in what they're saying? Are they seeing something in me that I do not see in myself? Please show me. Open up my heart to myself. And just bring it before the Lord. And in verse 15 to 16, For in you, O Lord, I hope, you will hear, O my Lord. David, David knew knew to hope. He knew to whom he needs to make his plea known. He knew that it's only the Lord that can save. It's only the Lord that can redeem. It's only the Lord that can restore. It's only the Lord that can make what is broken whole again. And he was making his heart known before the Lord. And we need to know the same. It's only the Lord that can restore. And he can restore anything. There's nothing too far, nothing too short, nothing too wide that he cannot help and that he cannot restore. So we need to know what the Lord can do. So now we're going to go through everything again, but now I'm going to ask some questions to make it more practical, to make it a bit more personal. And I really want to... I want to encourage all of you to listen to this on behalf of yourself and not on behalf of the person next to you or on behalf of the person that you wanted to be in church today. It's not here. Okay? You are in church today. God meant for you to be here. So listen to it on behalf of yourself, please. Okay? If there's someone that's on your heart, write their name down, pray for them, and share the message with them afterwards. But for now, listen to it on behalf of yourself, please. So the first, in the first part, we spoke about the wrath of God, and we spoke about the existence of hell. And the question I want to ask you is, what is your understanding of God's holiness? What is your understanding of the fear of the Lord? What does the fear of the Lord mean to you? And why is the fear of the Lord the beginning of wisdom? I'm not going to give the answer. It's, I want you to journey with God about that if this is applicable to you. If you have not struggled with the Lord regarding the fear of the Lord and what that means, I want to encourage you and ask Him, Lord, why is the fear of the Lord the beginning of wisdom? It says so in Proverbs 9 verse 10 if you need rever- reference. Because the fear of the Lord is not something to be afraid of. Then the second part we spoke about was David and his, and his willingness to be chastened and be purified by the Lord. And the question I want to ask is, are you pursuing a life of holiness? Are you pursuing a life of holiness? Are you looking... And it's not works, people, really. I'm so afraid to step off those, but I don't need to be. It's not works. Works is when you're trying to do something to earn your salvation, all right? So we have that foundation. You are saved by grace through faith, and the Lord has saved you. But now after you've been saved, you need to start pursuing holiness. Okay, you need to start pursuing the life that Jesus lived, and that is my question. It's not to earn your salvation. You are saved. You are righteous. You are accepted. You are redeemed. But what now? Now you need to start bringing the kingdom, and the kingdom needs to come through your life. And how is it going to come through your life? You need to represent Jesus. So are you pursuing a life of holiness? And what does that look like in your life currently? Is God busy cleaning you? And if, and if you're like, no, the Lord hasn't rebuked me of anything in a while, it's probably because you've numbed your conscience so much. And he used to convict you, but you just didn't listen to him. You just ignored him so much, you don't realize it anymore. And we'll give time for repentance now, now. But if you want to repent right now, just say to the Lord, I'm so sorry. This is applicable to me. And then where David had his sin before him and he was in anguish over his sin, is do we realize how short we fall and that our good deeds do not come in place of our sin? Okay, it's, it's not a, does he a skull me? There's no scale. Like if I sin so much, I need to do so many good deeds. It's my good deeds. <laughs> 
It's nothing. Okay, it's just onto the Lord. We do it for Him and His honor and His glory. But it's nothing compared to the price that Christ paid. All my sin is before the Lord and I need forgiveness, which is found in Christ Jesus. David was honest before the Lord. As he said, he, he was mourning. He was, he, was in, he was real with his emotions. When was the last time you just had a real honest conversation with God? You see, sometimes when we start praying, we change the tone of our voice. We change the way we talk. Just talk to God like you talk to a friend. Just talk to Him. Just be real. Okay, just be real with the Lord. Just say, Lord, this is how I feel. This is what I'm going through. This is my raw emotion before you. Just bring it to Him. Like, He already knows it. He knows you so much better than you know yourself. We think we need to change the way we talk before God. He knows what's in your mind already. <laughs> like he knows everything. He knows what's in your heart that you do not even see yet. Like just be honest with him. But he wants you to vocalize it. He wants you to tell him. He wants you to ask him. So be real with God. So we know that relationships are built on communication. So how's your relationship with God going? How's that communication looking? Are you guys talking? You need to talk with God. You need to have a relationship with Him. And then where David said, I'm mute, I'm, I do not hear these people that are seeking my, my demise. If you're here and you're just spending so much time every week talking about people that are bothering you and just being a tent of people that dislike you, whatever it may be, just stop. <laughs> just stop worrying about it. Give it to God. And set your mind on the things that are important. Because if you're spending so much time, even if it's not physical time, but just in your mind, the amount of time you're spending in your mind thinking about irrelevant concepts and people, no one is irrelevant, but you guys get what I'm trying to say. Thinking of things that are not building up and that are not kingdom-minded. You're being distracted. And you need to set your mind on the things above and the things of God and His kingdom. And then David, lastly, we, we say, Do not forsake me, O Lord. O Lord, do not be far from me. As we said, David knew that it's only God that can save him. It's only God that can restore him. It's only God that can hear his cry and answer and resolve. So how dependent are we really on God? And, yeah. Do we believe, do you guys believe, I've re re very recently come to that realization again, is that the Lord does not want you, He wants to heal everything. Like sometimes we're like, no, this thing, this thing is important. I know God wants to heal this, but ach, these things are, it's not so big and it's actually my fault. The Lord wants to heal everything. You just really need to be willing. Okay, let's close our eyes. We'll ask the worship team to come up. So as I said, three things that I'm trusting for God this morning and that I'd like us to respond to. Firstly, we need to trust that the Holy Spirit will convict us of our sin. So we need to trust that He will show us where we're falling short and where we're walking and doing things against His will. And secondly, we need to repent. So then we need to say, Lord, I choose this morning, I choose. I choose to turn away from this. I choose to let go. I choose to stop. I don't know how I'm going to get it right. 
I don't have all the answers, but Lord, this is, I, I wish to stop with this. I wish to end this in my life. And then thirdly, we trust the Holy Spirit for ministry and healing. That He will come and minister and He will come and heal. So there where you are, I just want to ask you to just ask the Lord to show you what He needs to convict you of. Maybe you already know. Just He will convict you of whatever sin, whatever thing that is that you need to repent of. Then just as an outward act, I always ask for an outward act to say, Lord, I'm just responding and I'm just saying I'm responding to this thing. It's not just something in my mind, but it's something I'm actually doing. So this will be your first active response towards the thing that you need to stop in your life. Just as an act, as you repent, I just want you to stand up and just stand up. And I'm, I'm, I'm not going to ask you to come in front of the church and say, what sin you're repenting of? This is between you and God. Um, I just want you to say, Lord... Just as an outward act of something that's happening in my heart, I just stand up and I choose to stand up and end this thing in my life. And then just repent. Just repent before the Lord. Okay, now we need to trust the Holy Spirit for healing and for ministry. So Father God, I just trust you and I ask you to come and show yourself unto each and every person, Lord. Just as they're standing there, Father God, I thank you, Lord, that you hear their plea, you hear their cry. You know the weakness of our flesh and how desperately we need you. Lord, I just ask for healing, a healing in your spirit. Father God, there where there are roots that are really deep, deep in our hearts, there are roots for why the sin is habitually continuing in our life. I just ask that you will just reveal that to us right now in Jesus' name. Just show us, Lord, show us why we have these issues, why we have these things we're struggling with the whole time. Where is this coming from? as the Lord is speaking to you, just respond. You can just whisper and just talk to Him. Let me see. You need to communicate. Just speak to God about where you're at, what you're going through.
Yes, Lord, we just thank you for your peace. I thank you, Lord, that your Holy Spirit just minister peace, minister peace to us. It's peace and joy, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that it all can be found in your presence and in you. And in knowing you, Lord, is our greatest pleasure on this earth. There is nothing greater, there is no greater joy than knowing you being in relationship with you Father God and knowing that we can speak to you and knowing that you love us and call us Lord so I just ask for the God that your Holy Spirit will just continue the work that you've started Lord just continue the work Father God that whatever has been started Father God that it won't end this morning Lord but it will continue and that we will submit ourselves onto your will and onto your ways and onto the ways of the Holy Spirit and the leading of your Holy Spirit. And we will say, yes, Lord, to wherever you go, whatever you say, whatever you speak. And we will do things the way you wish us to do it and not as we want to do it. We just say, yes, Lord. We say, yes, we say, yes, we say, yes. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So... Uh, this morning, I really trusted that the ministry will be done through the Holy Spirit and not necessarily by someone. Um, but if you have a need and you'd like, as I said, there is a role for community as well where we do share with each other and pray for each other. So if you need to talk to someone and pray with someone, uh, especially if it's something that you, if you have sin in your life that you've been struggling with for really long and you just really don't know how to get free, um, I really want to encourage you to share it and t- talk to someone. Um, because the chances are really good that there are other people that struggle either still with the same thing or that they have struggled with the same thing, but the Lord has freed them. So let's not continue with sin. Let's speak out, bring it to the light, and trust the Lord for freedom. So if you have the need for prayer and to speak to someone, um, we will still be here in the front. You're welcome to come. Um, other than that, you're welcome to grab a cup of coffee, um, have a cookie, and enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Thank you. Thank you, worship team.